Welcome back to All The Gear. Today on All The Gear, I'm gonna show you how to take this $36 security camera and turn it into the cheapest macro time-lapse camera in the world. I'm going to show you how to tear down this camera as well as the Wise Cam V2. And I'm gonna show you how to adjust the focal length as well as set up a macro time-lapse so that you can time-lapse microscopic things on a microscopic budget. First of all, let me introduce the camera. This is the WiseCam V3. This is actually an incredibly cheap security camera with an excellent time-lapse function. Within its settings, you can easily set up time lapses of up to a month with customizable intervals and record to an SD card that is housed within the device, which enables anyone to enter into the time lapse space. Today we'll be utilizing the WISE V2 and V3 because they are the most budget friendly and they are the easiest to tear down. I'll be starting with the V2 and moving on to the V3. So if you're just interested in the V3, skip ahead with the timestamps below. So first things first, the WiseCam V2. I'm just removing the bottom two screws. The SD card is out. It will take some prying to get out, but just pops out. From here, we can just push the sides like that. We can remove the speaker. There's going to be a screw in here. The antennas just peels away like so. Undo that one screw in this hole here and the whole board pops out. What we are trying to achieve here is we want to take this lens and we want to twist it away from the sensor. That is going to shorten the focal length on the lens. This is going to be glued in. I can see the glue in here. That is glue on the tip is the glue that was holding it in place. That can now screw. And the further out we can get it, the closer the focal length. I'm gonna try and power it up. This is five volts because it's USB, so there's no real worry here. The indicator light is on the back there. Now that will start to flash blue once it is trying to connect to Wi-Fi. So it is indicating that it is working. Let me just check my Wise app. So what you may need to do is uh, you may need to pair it and then change the focal length because if the focal length is too short, you may not be able to pair it. So we're connected to Wi-Fi because solid blue. This is great. Okay, that, that is you guys. That is really good news. Add it to my iPad. So what I'm trying to achieve here is the shallowest focal length that I can possibly achieve. This is my screwdriver. That is pretty bloody cool, hang on. <laughs> Let me get you in close up, there's my beard. <laughs> so that, that is the tip of my screwdriver. Incredible. And the idea here is utilizing this technique, we can create macro time lapses and extremely cheaply. This may well be the cheapest macro camera that exists. That is incredible. We're done here. Now for the V3. Okay, so the tools I'll be using for this, a small screwdriver set. I will be using some forceps or tweezers and a knife and a pair of pliers. I have not teared this one down before. Initially, you're going to need to pry away the front guard. So find a gap around the edge that is wide enough to fit your knife into. And we can just lift it away and work the knife around the edge. And that should allow you to remove the front face. It is glued down. And you're left with the camera looking like this. So we're going to remove these rubber plugs just with a pair of tweezers. They're more likely to push in than pull out. So if you can get down beside them and then drag them out. Like so. And then we're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver and take out the screws. So we've got three screws. There's our screws. 
First of all, you actually want to make sure that this SD card is removed. Well, you can just take the SD card out. The face won't come off without the SD card being removed. And we can just get a knife and slide it down the side and use the knife to pry the front cover out. And there's a rubber seal that keeps the whole unit waterproof. The front face just pops out. Don't pull it all away because there will be some ribbons connecting it to the back. And you can see there the ribbons connecting the speaker and the power cable. So you can disconnect those if you like, or you can work on it the way it is. I'm gonna leave them connected. And what we're gonna do is there's four screws on the motherboard. We're gonna take out the screws on the outside. The internal screws hold the lens on. I'm gonna remove the two external screws. And the front face should come away. Now it will be tight because the lens is actually holding it in place. It will be sealed. So if you like, you can just push the lens and the face will actually come away. Because we've got cables connecting it, it won't come all the way out. There's gonna be a really short cable just here and we're gonna remove that. Okay, so I've removed that cord to make it a little bit easier to adjust the lens. There is glue on the side of this lens as well, but we should be able to Yep, there we go. So that lens is now moving. And we can adjust that lens to whatever focal length we like. We can plug our face back in. Now that our lens is loose, we can adjust our focal distance. Plug us in. And on the front, we've got our red indicator LED. That will go blue once we've got a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so here is our camera. Here is the picture that we're getting from the lens. And we can adjust this picture, we can adjust the lens to the distance that we want to achieve. For example, we are very, we've got a very close focus. So we're gonna to wanna to adjust that in. I'm just gonna twist it until, okay, so our focal distance is very close, too close. We're gonna keep screwing it until we get a focal distance that is more appropriate. Still too close, getting better. That's about two centimeters. One, between one to two centimeters. What do I need it at? So for my use case scenario, this is what I'm time-lapsing. It's plant cell tissue culture samples and I want the focal point to be on the top of the sample when I place the camera on top. So I just need to measure that length, which is three centimeters, 30 millimeters, around about. You get about 10 mils to play with. Um, so the focal length that I want to achieve will be 30 mil, which is there. And that is a clear picture. So I'm happy with this focal length, but that will depend on your use case scenario. You can get it down to, as you saw, on the lens, which is pretty cool. <laughs> really, really cool. In fact, while I've got this here, here I have a purpose-built microscope with a screen, and this is a slide of fish gill. Here is a use case scenario if you perhaps did not want to specifically purchase a microscope. So as you can see, this microscope allows you to look at the cellular structure of the fish gill with a large screen and allows you to record it and output it to HDMI 2 as well if you like. It has an SD card slot so that you can record just like the wise cam does, and I think you can see where I'm going with this. For the price of a wise cam, we can take this slide. I'm going to undo the lens, get that focal length through the glass. That's pretty cool. So definitely not as close. Under. I think we'll get a better idea if we use something a bit larger. There it is. That's pretty cool. 
And the coolest part is you can time lapse that. If you had this slide with living organisms in it and a way of holding this in place, which we're gonna get to, you can time lapse the organisms at that scale. So I'm gonna reset this to the focal length that I need. So while we've got this apart, we want to remove the O-ring around the outside of the camera lens. So I actually did this off camera, um, but it just pulls out. You just get a grip on the edge and pull it out. And that's what you end up with. And this is gonna allow us to turn the lens when we've reassembled the camera. It's also gonna make your wise cam not waterproof. Keep that in consideration. So we're going to replace our board and our screws like so. And we can just pop it back into place. So you can see here, there's a gap where that seal used to be around the outside of the lens. We just pop that in like so. At this point, you can replace your SD card if you like, and we can plug it into the power. So this is going to allow us to use some tweezers to adjust the focal length when the camera is reassembled. Um, you can even use your fingernails. I can definitely twist that with my fingers, but might be better off using some tweezers like this. You can see there, I'm twisting that lens, which will allow you to adjust it. Okay, so here's where the adjustability comes in handy. You can see there that it's not entirely in focus, which means I need to adjust that focal length, but because the camera's back together again, it's going to make it quite hard if you have that seal in because it holds it really tight. So I can just use my tweezers to adjust that focal length. Um, all right, so there we go. Oh, look at the detail on that. That is perfect. That is a lovely image and I'm able to time-lapse that now. That is what I've been trying to achieve. But if you're wondering, this is actually a slice of cactus. It's a spiralis cactus, it's rare, and I'm tissue culturing it out to multiply it so that I can propagate them and sell them. <laughs> that has worked really well. And in here is where I keep all my plant cell tissue cultures. And what I'll be recording, it's going to look like this. How good. So that is this camera here. And now I can start the time lapse of my plant cell tissue culture. Fantastic. To time lapse, we're just going to select in our menu more time lapse. Then we're going to set the time lapse for as long as possible, which is about a month. Set the intervals to minutes and 10 minutes for my style of time-lapse. It depends what you're time-lapsing, obviously. I'm time-lapsing plant growth, which 10 minute intervals is about right. You can set it to a higher frequency of time-lapse. It's just going to record more frames. The faster the interval rate, the more data you're collecting and the faster your memory card will fill. But 10 minutes is about right for me, so I'm gonna set that. And we've got a macro time-lapse underway. So I'm now gonna play for you some time lapses that I took on the Wisecam V2 over the period of a few weeks. Okay, so there's really not much happening in these time lapses. There is information to be gleaned, like I wasn't aware of the movements that some of the tissue culture samples are demonstrating. Tissue culture is an extremely slow process, so I will need probably more like months to see results. But it serves to demonstrate that the technique works. I'm able to capture long-term macro time lapses or short-term if that's what you need in sharp detail and at a microscopic price. If you liked this episode and are interested in cell tissue culture, check out my other channel, Huchos, or if you're into stuff like mycology, check out this video where I show you how to build a laminar flow hood so that you can work within a sterile environment for procedures such as tissue culture or mycology. I hope you enjoyed this episode of All The Gear. Happy time-lapsing and I'll see you next time on All The Gear. <laughs>